ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to San Juan High School as Sideline Productions and Blue Mountain Cable TV presents the high school game of the week. Tonight, the San Juan Broncos will host the Cortez Panthers in homecoming night right here at San Juan High School. And this should be one of the most outstanding ball games of the year. From all the indications, this is going to be the toughest game so far for the San Juan Broncos and one that they're going to have to win because this is a league game against Cortez and uh, especially since it's homecoming they always want to win that game and Steve looks like a good matchup tonight. Yes, yeah, so you can just feel the excitement in the air tonight, Neil. It's going to be a great game. I'm Neil Joslin along with Steve Burton Shaw, and we'll be covering the ball game tonight, play-by-play -play wise, and hope you're going to enjoy the ball game. This is uh, the f fifth ball game of the season for San Juan. They are 4-0 and on the year. They've had an excellent season so far. They have uh, beaten the Emory Spartans 20-6. to They beat the Monticello Buckaroos 36-6. to They beat the Kirtland Broncos 45 to nothing. And last week in Kayenta, they won by a score of 34-6 over the Kayetta Mustangs. So they've done an outstanding job this year offensively and defensively, but tonight they're coming up against what will probably be the toughest opponent so far, and perhaps throughout the whole season in the Cortez Panthers. The Panthers also come into this ball game with a record of 4-0. They won the first game of the year 51 to nothing over Shiprock. They uh, won over Kirtland 32 to 6. It was 28 to 16. Cortez over the uh, Bloomfield team. And last week, they beat Aztec by a score of 37-7. to And in that ball game, Aztec had a 7-0 lead at halftime. And Cortez came back to uh, outscore Aztec 37-0 in the second half. Both teams put a lot of points on the board. The uh, P Panthers from Cortez are scoring about 37 points a game. They're giving up a little over 7 points a game. The San Juan Broncos scoring right around 34 points a game. And they're giving up 4.5 points a game. So we're going to be back in just a moment. We're going to pause for a couple of messages, and we'll be back to set some of the matchups for tonight's game right after these messages. Welcome back to San Juan High School in Blanding, where the San Juan High School marching band has just honored us with a little pregame show and the uh, Star Spangled Banner. And we're... Uh, Expecting a very good ball game. Neil Johnson along with Steve Burton shot tonight. And Steve, these two teams match up pretty evenly. They've got uh, both high-powered offenses, good defenses. And uh, as we said before, this could be one of the better ball games of the year. Listening to your uh, pregame uh, statistics, it sounds like they are a perfect match, Neil. Take a look at our new goalposts. We might mention that uh, San Juan does have some new goalposts. Last time we were here, against Kirtland, they tore down the goal post I remember on the North day. And uh, they did put up some new goal posts in the last couple of weeks. The Broncos are back out on the field right now. And we spoke about some matchups that we can watch for. Let's talk about the offensive line and defensive line for both teams. For the uh, Cortez Panthers, offensively, they've got Calvin Boggs, six foot, 180 pounds at the center. The guards, Tim Duran, six foot, 225 pounds. He's a big one, and he's one of the leaders of that team. At the other guard is uh, Jim Bob Wines, and uh, he's six foot, 185 pounds. He's a senior. The tackles, number 67, Alan Olson, 6'4", 210, wow. and he's a big boy. The other tackle, Mark uh, Cannell, he's six foot, 200 pounds, another big one. The tight end is Bruce Ledbetter, 6'2", 180 pounds. So they've got a terrific up front line, we've a got lot a of beef. We've got a forest there on the front line. And that's going to be a big challenge for the San Juan defensive line of Jason Tate, 6'2", 180. Richie Monson, 6'4", 240. He'll match up well against Alan Olson and Tim Duran. The nose guard, Jason Watkins, 5'10", 155 pounds. He'll be the the smallest man on the line there when he's on defense. That'll be a big challenge for him. Eric Laws will be the other tackle for San Juan. He's number 65, 5'8", 170 pounds. And uh, Gary Black, the other defensive end, 5'11", 160. Gary's had a good season. Tonight will be a big challenge for him. I think Gary can hold his own. Then when you look at the other side of the uh, coin, when San Juan is on offense, they've got Eric Grover at the center. He's 6'2", 180 pounds. Lauren Cook, 5'8", 140. He'll be the smallest man on the line when they're on offense. That'll be a challenge for him tonight. Robert Mance, the other guard, 5'11", 195. Jeremy uh, Liberton, one of the tackles, 5'10", 195. 
and uh, Richie Monson, 6'4", 240, the other tackle for San Juan. Jimmy Swenson is the tight end. He's 6'3", 170, but Swenson's been hampered by a sore thumb this week, and we'll see if that has uh, any kind of an indication throughout the ball game whether he's going to be able to catch the football or not. Might, right. might cause some problems. On the defensive line for the uh, Cortez Panthers, they've got Brian Candelaria at one end. He's 6'4", 280, he's a big one. They got uh, Kalen Boggs. He's six foot 180. The center. He's uh, one of the tackles. The other tackle is Tim Duran. Again, six foot 225. And Alan Olson, the other defensive end. He's uh, six four 210. So the defensive and offensive lines. It's going to be a big battle right in there. And I think the team that hits hardest and uh, executes the best in this ball game is going to have the edge. This is definitely going to be a contact sport tonight. And San Juan uh, is going to have some other problems. They've got some big linebackers back there. Dave Dunn, number 81, he's 6'3", 190. He sets up right in the middle as a middle linebacker. And that could cause some problems for Jens Nielsen to throw into the middle, those little slant patterns that San Juan likes to throw. Maybe some of those screen passes that they're famous for could cause some problems. The other linebackers, Ronnie Moore, 6'175", and uh, Darren Noyes, 5'11", 175. And these Cortez Panthers like to hit. One of the uh, things that we have uh, been told from the scouting reports and talking to some of the San Juan players and the coaching staff, they feel that they might be able to throw the football tonight. And one of the targets that they'll be throwing to is big John Schmidt. Not big in stature, but he's sure done a whale of a job this year. We've seen him before this he year. He and David Lee, the wide receivers that come in and out, they're going to they're gonna have a challenge tonight. And the man we might watch for him to throw against is number seven, Barry Weitzel. He's 5'11", 165 pounds. And the preliminary scouting report says that uh, he can be thrown against. So we'll wait and see what happens from that standpoint. The captains have just met at midfield. Robert Mance, uh, Kahia Fisher, Stacy Yazzie, and... Uh, Richie Monson, the captains for San Juan. Look like Alan Olson and Tim Duran, the uh, captains for the Cortez team. I didn't get uh, a chance to see who on the flip of the coin. I believe San Juan will be receiving. So we're gonna have a big ball game coming up. Don't go away, grab a seat, uh, take care of whatever you need to take care of, grab a snack, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff of tonight's ball game right after these messages. This edition of the Game of the Week is brought to you by these participating sponsors, Cortez Camera, Broadway Furniture, Wagon Wheel Pizza, Kent's Foods in Monticello, Palmer's Office Supply, The Flower Shop, Gopher Foods in Blanding, Don Palmer's Welding, and the College of Eastern Utah. Welcome back to San Juan High School. Neil Joslin and Steve Burtonshaw. We're about ready for the opening kickoff. It's homecoming, and we're looking forward to a firing up ball game. Everybody's going to be cranked up. The stands are filled on both sides, and Cortez will be kicking off to San Juan. It'll be Dave Dunn doing the kicking for the uh, Cortez Panthers. He'll be kicking back there to Cahia Fisher. And Jason Tate, it looks like, are back. And John Schmidt also back. He's standing on about the 10-yard line. Fisher's had a bad ankle this week. We'll see if it causes him any problems. Coach Morris Swenson told us before the game he's ready to go both ways, offensively and defensively. So hopefully Fisher will be in the ball game tonight. There's the whistle. And Steve, we're underway. Here Low we kick, go. line drive. It'll be taken by Fisher at the 10. Out to the 15, across to the 20. He's being chased by a number of jerseys. Finally gets across the 20 to the 30 and dragged out of bounds across the way at the 32-yard line. Number 20, the man that made the tackle. It was a fine run by Fisher. Let's see if we can find number 20 on our roster here. Number 20, John... Malenry, the man that made the tackle. So San Juan takes over first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. We're underway, 11.48 to play in the first quarter. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback. He's got Stacy Yazzie and Kyle Meyer in the backfield. Fisher is the slot man. We'll set the line in just a moment. Handoff goes to Meyer. He slashes through and gets a big gain out to across the 40 to the 41-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of the first down. Good blocking up front that time. By the right side of that line, Robert Mance, Jeremy Liberton, and uh, Eric Grover doing a fine job for uh, Kyle Meyer. As he gets nine yards, it'll be second and, no, second and one. Now Looks they'll mark it back about the 40. Looks like that offensive line is out there to, to make some room for those boys. 
So Jens Nielsen on second down. Hands off to Meyer again. Meyer's got the first down and more. Forward progress should take him out to about the 44-yard line. It'll be a first down for San Juan. Again, that right side, the left side of the San Juan line blocking very well. Robert Mance doing a good job in there. Jeremy Liberton and the San Juan Broncos have a first and 10. It'll be at their own 43-yard line. Jens Nielsen again has eyebacks this time. Same two, Yazi and Myers. Nielsen wants to pass. He falls down, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield. Number 61 in there. Mike Rowley, the man that made the tackle for the Panthers. He's in the lineup instead of somebody. I'm not sure uh, who he's replacing. We'll try to find out as soon as we can. The Panthers have got, again, Keelan Boggs, Tim Duran, Alan Olson, and Brian Candelari up front. The Broncos will be dropped back. It'll be second down and about 16. Handoff goes to Tate, it looks like, the man with the football. And Tate is out across the 45-yard line near the uh, 47. They'll give him progress to the 47. That'll bring up third down and right around six yards. And, and the run, Broncos... That running game's looking good tonight. So far, so good. That's the part of their game they've been worried about all year long. Nielsen, the quarterback. There's a whistle on the play, and the markers are down. Could be a penalty against San Juan, possibly motion. Now they're going to mark it off against Cortez. No, check that. Wait a minute. Let's wait and see. Offsides against the Panthers. The referee indicated offsides against San Juan. But that'll be a march off of five yards against the Panthers. That'll take the ball out near mid, well, across midfield to the 48-yard line of the Panthers, and that'll be close to a first down. They need to get right about to the 46-yard uh, line, so it'll be third and one. Good break that time for the Broncos. Jens Nielsen brings the uh, Broncos up to the line of scrimmage. Fisher is in motion to the near side. Nielsen hands off to the first back through. Look like Myers, and Myers has the first down inside the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. Now they'll mark it at the 44. That will still be a first down. Give Myers a gain of about three on the play. And again, that left, that time, the right side of the line. The Everybody was pulling that time. The moving company's doing a job tonight. Speaking of the moving company, Eric Grover, Lauren Cook, Robert Mance, Richie Monson, and Jeremy Liberton all doing a fine job blocking so far in this first drive. Nielsen hands off to Fisher. Fisher gets a couple of blocks. He's got to the 20, the 15, the 10. He may score. He does. Touchdown, San Juan. <laughs> 43-yard touchdown run by Kuhia Fisher. And we mentioned before the opening kickoff that he'd had a bad ankle this week. Morris Swenson came up to the, the booth before the game and said, he better be ready, and that time he was. Excellent blocking again. Little trap play that time. Monson, uh, or excuse me, Manson Liberton doing the blocking. He made a couple of moves downfield, got past a couple of blockers and some tacklers and got into the end zone. 43-yard touchdown run. The Broncos lead 6 to nothing. Well, the ankle seems to be doing all right, Neil. San Juan going for the two-point conversion. They'll hand off to Yazzie. Yazzie's in there for the touchdown and the two-point conversion. And so the Broncos jump out to an 8 to nothing lead over the Cortez Panthers. And with 8.52 to play, we'll be back after these messages. Well, after that drive that started on about the San Juan 33-yard line, they marched 67 yards for the touchdown in about 10 plays. And Cahia Fisher capping it off with a 43-yard touchdown run. Stacy Yazzie kicks it off. There's a marker down on the kickoff. Probably an offside penalty against San Juan. That's what it'll be. But uh, the Broncos 
have had a hard time with their running game all year long. It's been the sore spot, according to Morris Swenson. And they took the football on the first drive and just marched his 67 Looks yards. Like they've been working on that pretty hard this week. The only time they tried to pass, Nielsen fell down in the backfield, slipped on the possibly some loose turf, fell down and was sacked for a loss of six. But uh, other than that, they ran the football exclusively, and they, they did a fine job. Now we'll see what the Panthers can do when they get the football. Yazzie will kick it off on the 35-yard line following the markoff. Back to receive is Perry Berry, Caldwell, and looks like Matt Riffey also back, standing on about the 10-yard line. There's the kickoff. It's going to be short. It's going to be taken by Riffey. It's fumbled. Riffey picks it up at the 20-yard line and goes down right at about the 22. His knee hit the ground. They'll blow him dead right there. And that's where Cortez will take over right around the 22-yard line, first and 10. But the Cortez Panthers on offense. Calvin Boggs is the center. Jim Bob Wines is uh, one of the guards along with Jim Durant, Tim Durant. Alan Olson and Mark Cannell are the tackles. The tight end is Bruce Ledbetter. The backs are Perry Berry and Matt Riffey. We'll talk about them in just a minute. The quarterback is Scott Story. Two wide receivers come to the near side. It's Caldwell and uh, Mike Rust, number 80. Story hands off to the second back through. Looked like Matt Riffey. No, check that. Perry Berry, the man that got the football, the tailback. And Berry's going to be out close uh, to a first down. They're going to take a timeout and mark it. Last week against uh, Aztec, Perry Berry ran the ball 18 times for 159 yards. Matt Riffey ran the ball 14 times for 151 yards. So these two backs for the San Juan, for the Cortez Panthers are devastating on the ground. And that time, uh, Riffey got some good blocks from Tim Duran and Calvin Boggs. Alan Olson also helping out. And he's going to be close to the first down. It's going to be second down in inches. That big old line for Cortez is working well, too. We talked about it at the beginning of the uh, broadcast. That's going to be the big story, the, the battle in the trenches, which line is going to be able to hold the most. And that time, the Cortez line blew San Juan right off the line of scrimmage. So Cortez is uh, faced with a second in inches from right around the 31-yard line. They've got to get out to about the 32. Now the referee blows the whistle. We're about ready to go. Caldwell is uh, the slot man to the far side. There's the handoff. It looks like he went to Riffey, the first man through, and Riffey's going to be wrapped up by a number of Bronco players. Look like Yazzie in there along with Eric Laws, but he's going to have the first down. He gains out to right around the 40-yard line, 35-yard line. No, now they will call him all the way out to the 39, so that's going to be a gain of right around six yards for Matt Riffey. First and 10 for the Cortez Panthers. They've had the ball two times. They've got a first down already. Mike Russ to the near side. He's the split man. Caldwell goes in motion to the far side. Handoff goes to the second man through. That's Perry Berry. He's wrapped up there. Looks like uh, Schmidt comes up to help on the tackle along with Robert Mance and Cahia Fisher. That's going to take the ball out to the 43-yard line, gain of four on the play, second down and six. And again, the offensive line for the uh, Cortez Panthers doing a fine job. Blowing the San Juan Broncos off the line on second down and six. Story again with eyebacks. Number 28, Brett Chappell is to the near side. Handoff goes to the second man through again. That's Riffey. He's out near the 45-yard line. They'll mark it on the 45. It's going to be a gain of two. That'll bring up third down and uh, right around four. Into the ball game comes Mike Rust, or Joey Rust, I should say. Three backs in the backfield, kind of a power eye formation. Now Rust comes to the near side. Caldwell is the slot man on the far side. Handoff goes to the first man through. That's Riffey. Riffey gets across the line of scrimmage into the secondary. And he's dragged down there by Gary Black, the defensive end. And again, fine blocking up front by the left side, Jim Bob Wines and Mark Cannell to open the hole for uh, Riffey that time. Or was it uh, Perry Berry? Looked like Riffey was the man that carried the football. Looked like a broken play, but he squirted out of there. 
The gain is across midfield to the San Juan 47-yard line. First and 10, two wide receivers, Chapel and Caldwell to the far side. Hand off, now there's a fake. Story wants to throw, downfield, he's got a man open, but he's gonna be intercepted. Cahia Fisher down there, makes a fine grab on his knees at the 30, the 28 yard line. The ball was intended for Caldwell, a little bit underthrown, Caldwell was behind everybody. If he could have got the ball up a little bit, it would have been a touchdown, but Cahia Fisher got the ball on his knees and uh, it's gonna be first and 10 for San Juan, a big break for the Broncos right there. Looks like this may be a ground game tonight, especially for Cortez. Well, San Juan takes over first and 10. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, Myers and uh, Yazzie in the backfield. Pitch out comes to Meyer to the near side. Meyer's gonna be hit right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for about one yard. Number 61, again, the man that made the tackle. That's Mike Rowley. Penalty markers down on the field on that last play. It looks like it's gonna go against San Juan. And uh, that time Myers was kind of naked on the near side. Nobody picked up that linebacker, Rowley. And Myers just did a good job to get back across the line of scrimmage and pick up a yard, but it's not gonna make any difference because they'll mark off a five yard penalty, holding 10 yard penalty against San Juan. And that's, that's one of the things we talked about. If the, the penalties could kill San Juan tonight, They've hurt them all year, but in a game like this against an opponent like Cortez, they could really be devastating. Eye backs are split backs this time for Jens Nielsen on first down. Aaron Jones, the man with the football, he gets out across the 25-yard line. Again, Rowley, the man that makes the tackle. Gain of five. That'll bring up second down and 15 for San Juan. Now they'll call it six. It'll be second down and 14. Aaron Jones is one of the... About the, they tell me he's the second fastest man on the team. That's what I was trying to say. I've seen him run, he's awful fast. John Schmidt, supposedly the fastest man on the team. Swenson, the tight end, comes to the near side. Jens Nielsen on second down, wants to throw. Downfield, he's looking for a man open, at, trying to get David Lee, but uh, the fall, pass falls incomplete. Number 40, Craig Turner, and number seven, Barry Weitzel back there to cover. That'll be third down and uh, 14 for the Broncos. That defense was in there awful quick on that one. That's right, and uh, that's another thing we talked about, the time that they're gonna be able to give Jens Nielsen. Didn't look like they, they gave uh, Lee enough time to get down and run his pattern that time. Jones and Yazzie in the backfield. Here comes the rush. There's a screen pass to Fisher. Fisher gets away from one tackler. That's Rowley. He's out across the 40, the 35 yard line, I should out. Uh, near the 40-yard line, close to a first down. And it'll depend where they mark it. It's very close to the first down that time. That screen pass set up perfectly. Rowley almost made another terrific tackle, but uh, Fisher just squirted out from, yeah. from his arms. And now we're gonna have a mark off to see if uh, Fisher did get the first down. That ankle doesn't seem to be bothering him too much tonight. They must have it taped pretty well. Well, when you consider this is homecoming too, that, that really adds a little bit to the yes. healing process. That was a perfectly executed screen pass that time by the Broncos. The Cortez beautiful. team came right through there. Rowley came through, Duran came through, Olsen was through there. And it will be a first down, I believe. We'll see where they mark it. It must be an inch. It's awful close if it's not. We haven't seen an indication from the referee, but it doesn't look like they're going to get the first down. It will be very, very close. Just inches away from the first down. No, now they do say it's a first down. We didn't get an indication from the ref. I'll have to go down and talk to him. Let him know we can't uh, read his lips down. get that indication, did you? Okay, so it's a first down. Fisher picks up 14 yards on the screen pass. And Fisher's been a mainstay in that uh, offense so far tonight. Moving on the line, markers are down. Looks like number 82, Candelaria, might have jumped a little bit too soon. And that'll be a five yard mark off against Cortez. Bring up first and five for San Juan. Dunn comes out of the ball game now. Number 73, Dave Ledbetter comes in. San Juan with the first and five. The ball is uh, right at the 45-yard line. 
Jens Nielsen wants to throw, big rush, gets the ball downfield, intended for Jimmy Slavens. Or Billy Slavens, I should say. And Slavens almost had it. He had some good coverage back there. Ball thrown just a little bit too far in front of him, and he couldn't quite hang on. Jens that time had to throw that one up for, for grabs. And I, Billy did a good job to I get over there. I thought he had it. I think the defender's knee came in and kind of bumped the ball loose. Might have done. My apologies, Billy. I, I'll get your name right the next time. <laughs> Jens Nielsen on second down. Throws out. It's intended for... Uh, look like Schmidt, the man they tried to hit. On that little screen pass out to the, uh, the end. Incomplete. That'll bring up third and five. And uh, again, the Broncos will probably end up having to throw the football right here. But the way they've... Uh, been running we may never you know it might be a good running running play they're not getting the time to get the good pass off they may have to run it that defense from Cortez is doing an excellent job putting the pressure on Jens on third down wants to throw the football lots of pressure gets it off again I think he wanted to throw the screen pass to Fisher or maybe he was just dumping it off but big pressure that time and uh, Cortez does a good job and San Juan will now have to punt the ball away on fourth and five those linemen didn't want to catch that pass, so it just fell dead. So the Cortez Panthers throw the ball away in an interception, but they hold the San Juan Broncos inside their own territory, and now uh, Stacy Yazzie will be punting. Looks like Caldwell and uh, Matt Riffey back to receiver. Perry Berry, number 22. Berry takes it on the 20, comes to the near side. He's got lots of speed, and Schmidt runs him down and drags him down from behind at the 30. And that's an indication of the kind of speed that John yeah, Schmidt has. Coming. Barry's about the fastest man on the Cortez team, and Schmidt ran him down without any problem. So the Cortez Panthers will take over first and 10 on their own 31-yard line. And we'll see if the San Juan Broncos off defensive line can shore up this time and keep the Panthers from running it. Caldwell and Rust are to the far side. Myers shifts over to help out on the coverage. Handoff goes to the second back through, and again, uh, this time the San Juan Broncos tighten up. Barry, the man with the football, maybe gets a yard. Now they'll give him two. That'll bring up second and eight. We got 228, 227 and counting to play in the first quarter. San Juan leads eight to nothing. Cahia Fisher scored on a 43-yard run on a screen pass. Two wide receivers now for the uh, Cortez Panthers. Story, the quarterback, pitches out to Barry, tries the end on the right side, gets a couple of blocks. He's in the open field, and he's going to be dragged down out near the 45, 48-yard line, out near midfield. Fisher, the man that came over to help on the tackle, and they'll mark it right at midfield, first and 10 for the Cortez Panthers. And Barry showed some good running talents that time. Good blocking up front by Alan Olson and Tim Durant and the tight end, Bruce Ledbetter. That offensive line's doubling up on Watkins in there, and it's tough for him to get loose. Caldwell goes to the far side, Russ to the near side. Split backs in the backfield for Story on first down. Handoff goes to Riffey. And Riffey falls forward for about five yards. Yazzie in on the tackle for the Broncos, but not before Riffey can pick up. Uh, they'll give him four yards. They'll bring up second and six. Ball is sitting on the San Juan 46-yard line. Last time the Panthers got this far down, they threw an interception. Second down and six for Story. Hand off to the first man through. That's Barry, or Riffy, that, that is, number 32. Riffy's out near the first down. He's going to be about two yards short. That'll bring up third and two. Riffy and Barry look a lot alike. They're both about the same height. Riffy's a big one. He's 6'1, 195. Perry Barry's 5'11, 170. Both good size for running backs. Rustin Caldwell again to the far side. Caldwell's the slot man. Story hands off again to Barry. Barry's got the first down and more inside the 45-yard line. 
Down inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line, first and 10, and the Panthers keep the ball on the ground and grind it out. So first and 10. Number 40, Craig Turner's in there, the wide receiver. He comes to the near side. Caldwell goes to the far side. Story on first down with split backs, hands off to Riffey. Riffey breaks one tackle. He's dragged down by Yazzie. Mance also in on the tackle for the Broncos. There was a man through there quickly for the Broncos, but uh, Barry or Riffey broke the tackle. He got about uh, two yards. That'll bring up second down and eight for the Panthers. We've got Donald Guyman in there for Richie Monson. 20 seconds to play in the first quarter. The Panthers will have time for maybe one more play. Story pitches out to Barry, tries that right side again. Lots of pursuit by Schmidt. He, he misses the tackle. Yazi misses the tackle. Barry gets down to the 30-yard line, down to the 29 before Fisher brings him down. Mance also in on the tackle. And that's the end of the first quarter with the Cortez Panthers driving. They're inside the San Juan 30 at the 29-yard line, but San Juan leads by a score of 8 to nothing. And we'll return with the second quarter right after these messages. Neil Joslin and Steve Burtonshaw at San Juan High School where the San Juan Broncos lead the Cortez Panthers 8 to nothing. As we start the second quarter, the Panthers have the ball at the San Juan 29-yard line, first and 10. And they're driving. They started this drive back on about their own 30-yard line. And all they've done is run the ball with Matt Riffey and uh, Perry Berry, and they've gotten down to the 29-yard line. And so far, the San Juan Bronco line has not been able to stop that offensive thrust of the Panthers. Those Panthers want to get in there, Neil. They can smell one. I wonder if there's anything wrong with uh, Richie Monson, if there was an injury or something, because Donald Guyman is in there at his tackle position. And that's the side that uh, the Panthers have been running to on that right side. Looks like Monson's having uh, some attention to his shoulder over there. Hopefully it's not going to be anything serious. We've got a little discussion on the sideline right now, possibly about where they're going to mark it. While we've got a little time, we might remind you or uh, mention to you that during the halftime ceremonies tonight, we're going to show uh, the uh, homecoming royalty at midfield and uh, the activities uh, with the drill team and other things happening at halftime. And we're also going to go back and uh, show you the homecoming parade that took place this afternoon. And so that might be something you want to look forward to uh, coming up at halftime. But right now, we're about to start the second quarter and the Panthers have a, f have a third and about, uh, about two, they call it. A couple of substitutions in there. Lee Everett is in the ball game now. He comes in motion to the near side. The handoff goes to Everett on a reverse, and Everett's going to be dropped down there. Gary Black, the man that stayed home on his defensive end position, I don't know if he's going to get the first down or not. They're going to call him short. Black did a good job that time reading Get the in. play. It's going to be fourth and one, and Gary Black has done an outstanding job all year at the defensive end position, and that could be a very big play, but the Cortez Panthers are going to go for it on fourth down. Caldwell to the near side. They've got uh, Russ to the far side. Movement on the line. No whistles. And now Story wants to take a timeout. There was movement on the Bronco line, but they didn't uh, make any contact, and they got back across. And uh, it might have thrown Story off a little bit. He calls a timeout, wants to talk it over. Looks like Richie Monson coming back into the ball game now. Donald Guyman goes out, so that's good news. And we've got a timeout with 11.22 to play in the second quarter. Eight to nothing as our score. The Broncos leading the Panthers, and we'll pause for these messages.
Head coach Larry Archibak has come out and talked to the Cortez Panthers, and they're going to go for it on fourth and one. The ball is inside the uh, San Juan 30-yard line, right around the 29. Caldwell comes to the near side. He'll work against Cahia Fisher. The handoff goes to Riffey, and I don't think Riffey's going to get it. It'll be very close. Robert Mance, Eric Laws, Stacey Yazzie all coming off the pile that time, and we're going to have a measurement. Story says he thinks they got it. The Broncos say they didn't, and the referee's going to make the final decision. He wasn't running very long. Good defensive surge that time. They came off the ball very quickly and uh, got off their blocks. And Riffey was stopped right at the line of scrimmage. If he fell forward, it's going to depend where they mark the football. The all-important mark. And see what happens. While we're waiting for the chain, we'd like to remind you that... It looks like the preliminary indication might be a little bit short. No, now they do have the first down just by the nose of the football. And so the Cortez Panthers keep the ball. 11-11 to play in the first half. And the Broncos are up against it now. The ball is right around the 29-yard line, just inside the 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers. And they continue to move the ball on the ground. That was a break. That one could have gone either way on the spotting the ball. Craig Turner is to the far side. They've got Caldwell to the near side. He's the slot man. Pitch out goes to Barry. Barry is tripped up at the line of scrimmage by Schmidt. Yazzie comes over to help out on the tackle and finish him off. Schmidt tripped him up, a good defensive play from his cornerback position. It's going to be about a three-yard gain. That'll bring up second down and seven. And that's one of the keys for the uh, Broncos, I think, is to uh, stop that outside run by that's Barry. Right. <clears throat> on second down and seven, Russ goes to the far side. Caldwell's the slot man on the near side. Handoff goes to Barry again, and Barry's going to be smothered. Gary Black stops him right at the line of scrimmage. He's got some help from Yazzie. Robert Mance also helping out. And the Broncos are starting to stiffen up a little bit on defense. That's that defense we've seen before. Well, you know, this is really the first team that they played that, that really could run the football. The biggest line they've come up against, and it's going to be a challenge for them all night long. Because the Panthers on third and six turn into the far side. Story wants to throw the football. He's got Caldwell. Caldwell's got the football down around the 20, 10 yard line, right at the 10 yard line. Two men on him, Schmidt and uh, Fisher. Good pass by Scott Story, the quarterback. He just drilled that one into the seam. Good pass by, uh, good catch by Caldwell. He had to dive for it. He'll go out of bounds right at the 10 yard line. That'll bring up first and goal for the Cortez Panthers. Tough break for the Broncos that time. They had good coverage. Just a good throw and a good catch by Story and Caldwell. And now the Broncos with their back to the wall are gonna be up against it. Story the quarterback sends Caldwell to the slot side. He's on the right. Rust is on the far side. Handoff goes to, looks like Riffy, the man that got the ball. Gain of maybe four yards. Number of uh, blue jerseys in there. Mance and Yazzie in on the tackle. That'll bring up second. And from the way they've got the sticks marked, it looks like Cortez can pick up a first down right around the one yard line. So they're going to call it second and about seven. Turn it to the far side. Caldwell to the near side. Story the quarterback. Pitches out to Barry. Barry makes a good move inside, and he's hammered. I didn't see who came across. Looks like Gary Back, the first man that hit him. And somebody came across, Yazzie, that really hammered him right at the line of scrimmage. Yazzie's the bull, boy. He and Gary Black, they team up. What a, what a combination. I was talking to Morris Swenson this, this week during practice, and, you know, one of the things he, he mentioned is that, you know, Yazzie, 5'8", 205 pounds. He's all over the field, and he's he in is. on every tackle just about. They give him about uh, three yards. That's going to be third down and right around uh, three for the first down. The handoff goes right into the line of scrimmage. Fumble on the play, and I think the Broncos got it back. If they got the football, that's going to be a heck of a break. 
San Juan got the fumble. I didn't see, I think it was Barry, the man that got the football and fumbled it. I didn't see who picked it up. So the Broncos pick up the football in the end zone and they dodge another bullet. That was a close one. And it's too bad for the Panthers. They had an excellent drive going. They started on their 30 yard line, got all the way down to about the three and fumble the football and they that's two turnovers and two possessions that's and they've got to be kind of frustrated and not not come away with some points Jens Nielsen hands off to Myers Myers gets about five before he's brought down by a number of white jerseys now they'll give him about seven that's going to be second down and three you got a feel for the Panthers right now. They've done an excellent job all night, but they just get down in San Juan territory and cough the football up. Fisher in motion to the far side. Handoff goes to the first man through. That's Myers again. Meyer gets out to about the 30-yard line. It'll be close to the first down. And it will be a first and 10 for San Juan. Meyer doing a good job tonight. He and Fisher doing well on the ground. And Morris Winston has got to be real happy with the way his line and his backs are using that ground game tonight. Five yards of carry, you're going to make some progress. On first and 10 from right around the 30-yard line, double wide receivers, handoff goes. It's like Black, the man in the ball game. He'll gain three. Some substitutions in the ball game for uh, the Panthers. Number 83, Bruce Ledbetter made that last tackle. Fisher on mo in motion on uh, second down. Handoff goes again to Black, and Black's going to get about five yards. Riffy makes the tackle for Cortez. They'll give him about uh, six yards. That'll bring up third and one. And Jens Nielsen on third and one as full back, full house backfield. Handoff goes to Myers again. Myers coughs up the football, but they say he's down. The Cortez Panther fans wanted to wanted a fumble that time. Myers looks like he's going to have the first down. Olsen makes the tackle for Cortez. The ball is right around the 40-yard line, and I think they're going to give him a first down. So Myers does it again. Gain of about three on the play. First and 10 just in, outside the 40-yard line at the 41. And so San Juan continues to move the football on the ground. They've only tried a couple of passes, and those have both been incomplete. 5.46 to play in the first half. San Juan leading eight to nothing. Jens Nielsen wants to throw. He throws oh. the football right into the hands of Dave Dunn and Dunn can't hang on. What an opportunity for Cortez that time. Jens Nielsen didn't see Dunn. Dunn's that big 6'3 linebacker right at the middle part of that defense. I think he was trying to hit somebody on a slant pattern and Dunn just stepped right in. It's like if he throwing could. over a 10 foot fence. At least a 6-3 fence. <laughs> if he could have had that one, he would have made good yardage, possibly scored, but uh, San Juan gets a break. And they'll have second down and 10 on their own 41-yard line, and there's uh, some conversation down the field right now. The clock was uh, supposed to stop on the incomplete pass, and it kept going. And so now uh, Larry Archibak of the Cortez Panthers wants to find out why we couldn't get the clock to stop. And the referee's over talking to Morris Swenson. Now again, we remind you, coming up at halftime, all the uh, homecoming halftime ceremonies, the homecoming royalty, and... Uh, the other activities, the drill team, I believe, is going to be marching at halftime. And we're going to go back uh, to this afternoon and show you the homecoming parade that took, play, took place this afternoon on Main Street here in Blanding. A couple of uh, very fine ladies that uh, hosted that parade and 
We'll be bringing you that at halftime, so stick around. We finally got the clock situation straightened out, I believe. And on third down, second down, Jens Nielsen fumbles the football, and the Cortez Panthers grab it. Looked like number 41, the man that came up with a football. We can find him on our roster, and 41 is Ronnie Moore, the linebacker on the left side. He comes up with the football, and that's going to be first and 10 for the Cortez Panthers. Inside the Bronco 40 at the 38, first and 10 for Cortez. Caldwell goes to the far side. He's the slot man. Rust is on the near side. Story, the quarterback. Watch the throw, and there's lots of pressure, and he's dragged out in the backfield. Jason Watkins, the middle guard, came through and made the sack on Story. Loss of about six on the play. Story wanted to hit Caldwell, but he was pretty well covered by Kyle Meyer. Tried to roll out to the far side, and Watkins came through from his middle guard position and made the stop. There's some of that defense we've seen before. Loss of four on the play, so it'll bring up second and 14 for the Panthers. Excellent defensive play that time. And uh, one of the defensive plays that was really good is the uh, play of Kyle Meyer back there covering Caldwell. He did a good job on him. I, you could see Story looking to the left side, wanted to hit Caldwell, tried to roll out and hit him. But uh, Watkins comes through and makes a good play. It's been some good defensive play on both sides tonight. 4.53 to play in the first half. Cortez with the football. Caldwell in motion to the near side. Story has a miss, miss cue in the backfield. The ball is going to be downed. The Broncos thought they recovered it, but the whistle will be blown. Story was down. Looked like Gary Black, the man that came through to wrap him up, and Black's done another good job in his defensive end position. Looked like there was a miscue in the backfield. Story was wanting to hand off, and nobody was there. There's some terrible contact going on down on that line, too. Coughing that ball up. Everett to the near side. He's the slot man. Story wants to pass, and it's Hammer! <laughs> Jason Tate! The defensive end on the left side came through. Ledbetter couldn't stop him. Nobody could yeah, stop went him. through about six people. And Story was greeted to a rude awakening all the way back to about the 42-yard uh, line of the Cortez Panthers. They'll mark it at the 44. And that's going to bring up fourth down and a country mile for the Cortez Panthers. They'll have to punt the ball away. Excellent defensive series oh, that, that time great. for San Juan. They stood the ground. Perry Berry will punt. Cahia Fisher is back along with Tate. The ball bounces and it's going to roll into the end zone for the touchback. And San Juan will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line with 3.35 to play in the first half. Again, you got to give a lot of credit to San Juan's defense. Jason Tate that time did a fine job. He got around Ledbetter like he wasn't even there. He pushed him way back. And Story was just... <laughs> <laughs> had a loss for what to do. He was finally clobbered. And so a good defensive series. And now we'll see what San Juan can do with 335 to play in the first half. They haven't been able to throw the football tonight. That's what they wanted to do. Handoff goes to the second man through. See who it was. Looks like Fisher. A slow developing play that time. Maybe a gain of one. They'll bring up second down and nine. Candelaria makes the tackle for the uh, Panthers. And so far, it's been a pretty good ball game. Both lines of scrimmage, uh, both offensive lines doing a good job moving the other people out. Nielsen wants to throw. He's got, it. He's got Fisher. Fisher's down across the 25-yard line out to about the 30. They'll call him short at about the 28-yard line. At the 28-yard line. Number 11, Lee Everett makes the tackle. And Turner also over on the uh, tackle. That'll be third down and one at the 29-yard line. Fisher just short. And that screen pass is the only pass they've been able to throw tonight against the uh, Panthers. But the Panthers come so hard on defense, that's a, 
a perfect play to run. Nielsen has third and one. Hands off to the second man through. There's a loss on the play. Jason Tate, the man that got the football. And Tim Duran, the man that came through to make the tackle. Good read by Duran that time. Another real slow developing play in the backfield for the Broncos. And that'll bring up fourth down and about three and the San Juan Broncos are gonna have to punt the ball away. Perry Berry and Mike Caldwell drop back to receive. Yazzie gets the punt away. Good punt. It's gonna drive Caldwell back to the 30. He's gonna let it go. Schmidt will down it inside the 25 yard line at the Panther 24. And that's where they'll take over with 145 to play in the first half. At the end of tonight's ball game, we'll be selecting a defensive and offensive player of the game for the Broncos. And uh, kind of a new twist this week, the offensive and defensive players are going to receive a T-shirt from now on, courtesy of uh, Navajo T-shirt and design here in Blanding. And uh, it could be a tough decision who to call. It's, it's really a toss-up right now. It's been some excellent play. But we'll be making that decision at the end of tonight's ball game. Caldwell comes to the near side, Russ to the far side. Again, Riffy and uh, Barry. Barry gets the draw play, and he gets about one yard out to the 25-yard line. Yazzie makes the tackle. And again, Stacy Yazzie right there, Mr. Everything. He's all over the place. Just short of the 30 to give him back to the line of scrimmage. Well, now they give him about a yard. And so that'll bring up second and nine. Turner in the ball game now. He goes to the far side. Again, Caldwell to the near side. Second down and nine. Story wants to throw the football. He's got a man across the middle, and he overthrows number 83, Ledbetter. David Lee came up, tried to make the interception, but it was a little bit too late. Story rifled that one. That's, he's got quite an arm. Good coverage by the Broncos. That'll bring up third down and nine. Neither team really able to uh, throw the football tonight. And that was one of the things San Juan was wanting to do is throw that football, but they've had such success on the ground that it really hasn't been necessary. Caldwell and Russ both come to the near side. Riffy and uh, Barry are split in the backfield. Again, Story wants to throw the football downfield. He's got a man, there's Rust. Rust is gonna be on the 20, the 15, and he's gonna score. Joey Rust bobbled the football, and then he finally got a chance to hang on to it. Outrun Myers, and he outran Fisher. And with 49 seconds to play in this first half, the Panthers have struck quickly. 75-yard touchdown pass from Matt, from uh, Scott Story to Joey Rust, and like that, the Panthers are right back in the ball game, and they've got a chance to tie it up if they can get the extra two points. And we'll go into the locker room with a brand new ball game. He bobbled it, but he hung on. Good concentration that time by Rust. And that's what you like to see in your receivers. The ball hit him in the shoulder pads, bounced off. But he held on, and that's all that counts. He outran Myers. Myers had a good chance to catch him. Good, made a good effort to come all the way across the field, but Russ was a little bit too fast. And so now it looks like Cortez is going to go for the two-point conversion, and they could tie it up at eight apiece. And that extra two-point conversion for San Juan is very uh, prominent right now. They went for the yeah. extra two points. Coach Larry Archer back on the field talking things over with the Panthers, and they're going to go for it. It'll be a two-point conversion. If San Juan can stop them right here, that'd be a big feather in their cap. They could go in the locker room with a two-point lead. And now the Broncos want to take time out and talk it over. So what a dramatic turnaround. The first time the Broncos got the football, the first possession of the game, they drove 70 yards for the touchdown, 67 to be exact. And then there's not been any scoring, a lot of offense. Both teams have been able to move the football. But here in the last minute of the ball game, Cortez scores on a 75-yard touchdown pass. And uh, 
we could have thrown out the the rest of the first half and just played the first and last series of downs and that would have been it you see how deadly that pass can be though if there's a man open he's gone oh story's been dynamite all year long the people in cortez have had nothing but good to say about this whole panther team they've uh, They've had such terrible teams in the past and such rotten luck, and all of a sudden this year, they're 4-0, oh, they got a dynamite offense, they got a good defense, and right now they're gonna try for the two-point conversion to see if they can tie it up to go into the locker room. Calvin Boggs, the center, is over the ball. Caldwell to the near side, Turner to the far side. The handoff is gonna go to Barry, and Barry might have it, he's got a chance to throw in, it's tipped away. John Schmidt, the man that came over and knocked it away. Barry wanted to throw the ball into the end zone to Caldwell. And so the two-point conversion fails and the San Juan Broncos hang on to a slim lead, eight to six. And we've got 49 seconds to play in the first half. Again, we remind you to hang around for halftime because we're gonna have all the halftime ceremonies and the pageantry. We've got the... Uh, Royalty float down at the uh, south end of the field, about ready to uh, come on as soon as things end here in the first half. We're gonna have the presentation at, at midfield of the uh, Queen and some of the things that happened there. We've got the San Juan Bronquettes are gonna perform at halftime. And we're gonna go back and show you the uh, homecoming parade from this afternoon. Uh, very nice parade. That's uh, one of be the better honest. parades we've had for a long time. I had to put that one on at the 4th of July. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So now San Juan will have 49 seconds to hang on to the football so they can go into the locker room at halftime with a two-point lead. Dunn will kick off. Fisher, Schmidt, and Tate are back on about the 10-yard line to receive the kickoff. This one will drive Schmidt back to the goal line. It's gonna go into the end zone and it'll be de blown dead and it'll bring out to the 20-yard line. And so with 44 seconds to play, you kind of wonder if San Juan's just going to sit on the football yeah. and let the clock run out and go into the locker room at halftime with a two-point lead, or if they'll try something. A couple of weeks ago, we saw Monticello try something with less than a minute to play, and it turned into a six-point, uh, yeah. seven-point touchdown for the Broncos. Well, there's plenty of time if they want to go after it. When you're that deep in your own territory, a lot of times it's a good idea just to hang out to the football, just run it out with that little time left to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Nielsen hands off to Schmidt. The ball is fumbled. Schmidt's trying to run it down. It will s I can't see you got, got it on. back. I think Schmidt got it, and that's the kind of stuff that uh, <laughs> you don't want to do with only 40 seconds to play in the first half down at your own 20. You don't want to fumble the football away and give uh, Cortez a chance to get in the end zone again before halftime. They're right there on the line. And right now, Cortez wants to take a timeout, so the last 40 seconds have taken a lifetime to get there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so many times you see that happen. Yeah. 40 seconds to play, they tried to reverse to Schmidt. He was running, but he was going the wrong direction. And uh, it's really easy to sit up here in the booth and be armchair quarterbacks, but that's the kind of play that's dangerous anywhere in the field. If you don't get the exact handoff, you can uh, lose the football but uh, down at your own 20 yard line with 40 seconds to play. Might have been a better, better play selection. The San Juan Broncos come into this ball game 4-0, the Panthers 4-0. Both teams were uh, evenly matched coming in right down to the wire. You add up how many points each team has given up, how many points each team scores, and they're practically even. And uh, it's been a pretty good first half. You've seen it tonight. It's a matchup. One thing we haven't seen tonight is the San Juan rut passing attack. Jens Nielsen keeps it on uh, second down. And that'll probably run the clock out. Seven, six, five. And so the Broncos will go into the locker room at halftime with a two-point lead, eight to nothing. Again, they scored on their first possession. Driving 67 yards, the Panthers scored on the last possession of the uh, first half on a 75-yard touchdown pass. And so it's uh, eight to nothing at halftime. We'll be back with the halftime ceremonies right after this. Second half kickoff. 
Perry Berry, Perry Berry, Matt Riffey, and Mike Caldwell are back to receive the kickoff. Yazzie will kick it off as the Broncos will go on defense to start the second half of this ball game. This thing ought to go over the fans. And we're underway. Do not go away. The second half is going to be a good one. And it starts off with a kickoff that goes into the end zone. Cortez will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Scott Story is the quarterback. Calvin Boggs is the center. Tim Duran, Jim Bob L Wines is the, are the two guards. Alan Olson and Mark Cannell are the uh, tackles. The tight end is Bruce Ledbetter. Joe Russ, the man that just scored the uh, touchdown before halftime, is a split end. Perry Berry and Matt Riffey, along with Mike Caldwell, are in the backfield for the Cortez Panthers on first and 10. Russ comes to the near side. Caldwell goes to the far side. Story hands off to the first back through. It looks like it's uh, Riffey, and Riffey gets nowhere, maybe a yard on the, on the carry. A number of bl uh, blue jerseys in on the tackle. And that'll be uh, second down and nine. On second down, Caldwell goes to the far side. They've got Brett Chapel to the near side. Story hands off again, this time to Perry Berry. He got some running room. Mance comes in to make the tackle. Fisher comes up to help out, and Monson's also there. Perry might have picked out four or five yards on the carry. Now they're going to take him out near the first down. That's going to be a gain of eight on the carry. Third down and one. And the Panthers again move the football on the ground to start the second half. Rust to the near side, Caldwell to the far side. Handoff goes to the first man through again. That's Riffey. And Matt Riffey picks up about three and a first down for the Cortez Panthers. Riffey and Barry running hard behind Tim Duran, Calvin Boggs, and Alan Olson on the right side of that line. And it's first and 10 for the Panthers. The ball is just outside the 30 at about the 33 yard line. First and 10 for Cortez. Looks like the same game plan this half. Chapel to the near side. High backs in the backfield for Story on first down. Handoff goes to the second man through. That's going to be Barry. And Barry is driven back. His forward progress will take him out right around to the 35-yard uh, line. But I think he's going to be given that forward progress. Now they're going to mark it inside the 35 to about the 34. Gain of two. That'll bring up second and eight. Ten minutes to play in the third quarter, just underway here in the second half. Eight to six is the score. The San Juan Broncos leading the Cortez Panthers. Story wants to throw on third down, second down. The ball is fumbled and it's going to be picked up by the Broncos. Robert Mance picked it up. Number 83, Ledbetter, the man that got the football, had a good gain down inside San Juan territory to the 44-yard line. He fumbles the football and Robert Mance picks it up. Seen that before. So the Broncos get a big break right there to start the second half. They've got first and 10 on their own 45-yard line. The Panthers go on defense. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, hands off to Meyer, and Meyer's got about seven, and he did all that on his own. He got a good block up front. Robert Manson, Jeremy Liberton throwing a good block, but Mance did most of it on, on his own. Duran on the tackle. Alan Olson helping out. There's going to be a penalty marker down after the play, and they're talking to Richie Monson, so it looks like it's going to go against Cortez. Whatever it is, Richie just said, let's take it. So they're going to mark it off against Cortez. San Juan inside Cortez territory. The ball is going to be marked down. It's going to be a major penalty. They'll mark it down right about the 35-yard line. Let's see what the penalty, unsportsmanlike conduct, first down. 
And so the Broncos are inside uh, Panther territory with a first and 10 on the 35 yard line. And the Cortez uh, fans in the background getting cranked up. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, he's got Meyer and Yazzie in the backfield. Fisher in motion, there's gonna be a flag. And the Panthers look like they were offsides. And so that's gonna bring up first and five for the uh, San Juan Broncos. It's kind of hard from this angle to see exactly where the ball is. They're gonna mark it inside the 30 at the 29 yard line. First and five for San Juan. That's and just good, like... Good drive. These just families. like on their first drive of the ball game. And there's gonna be a timeout charge to the Cortez Panthers. They're a little frustrated. It looks like things are just kind of in a commotion out there on the field right now for both teams. 9-11 to play in the third quarter, eight to six to score, and the Panthers have taken time out. We'll be back after these messages. Cortez Panthers are on defense. The San Juan Broncos have a first and five at the Panther 29 yard line. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, Yazzie and Meyer still in the backfield. And there's a whistle again, just as the play begins. Lots of penalties on this drive. Procedure penalty against San Juan. That'll mark it back five yards. That'll bring up first and 10 which is better than first and 15. Tough to get a play off here this half. 9.09 to play in the third quarter. The Panthers took the opening kickoff and marched down inside San Juan territory. A pass from Story to Ledbetter got them down to about the 44. Ledbetter coughed up the football. Mance recovered it. Now the Broncos have marched down to the 34-yard uh, line of the Panthers. Nielsen on first down gives to Yazzie. Yazzie puts his head down and drives forward. Gets about four yards. Rowley, the man that brought him down. Rowley's played a pretty good game for not being in the starting lineup. Now Ledbetter comes in along with Riffy. Rowley comes out. Jens Nielsen has a full house backfield. Handoff goes to Myers. Myers got a big hole. He's down inside the 20 to the 15 yard, close to the 15. If my eyesight's correct, he might be down to the 20. First and 10, Meyer picks up from the 34 yard line down to the, down to the 19 yard line. Pick up a 15 yards on the play. First and 10 for the Broncos inside the 20 yard line of the Panthers. Nielsen hands off again to Meyer, and Meyer is going to be dragged down right at the line of scrimmage. Riffy in on the tackle, along with number 21. See if we can find out number 21. Now Dave Dunn is number 21 on our roster. Might be the guy without the jersey before the game. Might have been. Gain of three for Meyer, second and seven. Nielsen, the quarterback, wants to throw the football. Lots of pressure. He just throws the ball away out of bounds. Good play by Nielsen. Olsen came in and greeted him after the throw. He got clobbered. He's got the third down about to go. Ledbetter also back there helping out. Olsen had a lot of pressure. Nielsen did a good job that time just getting the ball out of bounds to uh, save the yardage. That'll bring up third down and about seven. And again, the passing attack not, not able to go because of that tremendous rush by the yeah, Panther defense. Time to get set. Olsen's a big man. 6'4", 210, there's whistles. And some more conversation among the referees down there. Ledbetter comes out of the ball game.
Number 85 goes back in and plays a lead better. That's Brett Ramsey. So third and seven, Schmidt's in the ball game at one of the wide receiver positions. Full house split backfield. And off goes to Aaron Jones. Jones gets down around the 12 yard line, dragged down by White, so there's a flag down and it might be a clipping penalty. Fisher was the man that went down. There was a flag that went right in the same vicinity. And we might have a holding penalty against San Juan. Or a clipping penalty against San Juan. There's that Aaron Jones penalty. Every time he gets a good runoff, there's a flag throw. That was a good run, about seven yards. Might have been close to the first down, but they're gonna call it back. They're talking to Dunn right now and Olsen. Seven thirty-eight to play in the third quarter, still eight to six the score. The Broncos scored on their first possession of the ball game, marching 67 yards, capped off by a 43-yard screen pass from Jens Nielsen to Cahia Fisher. The Bron Panthers scored on their last possession of the first half, 75-yard touchdown pass from Story to um, Joey Rust. The extra point attempt failed, and that's the difference in the ball game, eight to six. The Broncos have third and about 13 following the penalty. Jens Nielsen, the quarterback, in shotgun formation. Long snap, and Nielsen might have recovered, and I'm not going to be sure. Nielsen got the football back, but that's going to take him out of field goal range. The ball is going to be marked about the 36-yard line. And if Yazi were going to try and field goal, that'd be about a 46-yard field goal. Hey, I'm Cortez Fresh, 1, 22, 12. They are going to try the field goal. Yazi comes in. Be about a 47-yard field goal. Yazi, Jens Nielsen will hold. There's the kick. It's up. It's long enough. And it's not going to be any good. Dropped out of the air. Looked like it was going to be long enough. Dropped just short of the crossbars. And so the Cortez Panthers will take over first and 10 on their 36-yard line. And uh, both teams struggling this half. move the football, but they can't come up with any points. And now there's... Uh, now they move the ball back to the 20-yard line or the Panthers will take over first and 10. So it's still a stalemate. Both teams moving the football, but neither defense giving up the points. Story will bring up the Panthers. He's still got Riffy and uh, Barry in the backfield. Caldwell goes to the far side. He's the slot man. Joey Rust is to the near side. Handoff goes to the second man through Barry. He tries the right end and he's gonna be smothered. The Broncos stringing that one out very well. Fisher up on the tackle. Gary Black uh, also. And it looked like uh, John Schmidt making the tackle. Gain of seven on the play. And that'll bring up third and three. And that's the play that the Broncos are going to have to stop at the line of scrimmage. Caldwell now the slot man. Turner the wide receiver to the far side. Handoff goes again to Barry, and Barry's going to be hit right at the line of scrimmage. Check that Riffy, the man that got hit. Mance up on the tackle. Jason Watkins on the tackle. And Yazzie also there. So the, uh, the San Juan linebacker is very active tonight. Mance and Yazzie have been in on most of the tackles. That'll be third down and three. No gain that time for Riffy. Caldwell goes to the far side. Joey Rust again to the near side. Story pitches out to uh, Barry. Barry runs into a, one of his own men, tries to get around. The Bronco pursued very good that time. Richie Monson finally made the tackle. That'll bring up fourth down and three. 
and that play was doomed from the beginning. <laughs> Barry ran into a couple of his own men, and the Bronco pursued over there very quickly. Gary Black doing a good job to contain. Monson came across and uh, showed good pursuit that time to make the tackle. Barry will punt the ball away. Fisher lets it bounce. Now he'll take it on the 35-yard line, runs it up the gut, across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Brought down there by a number of white jerseys. Jim Bob Wines, the man that made the tackle. And so the Broncos go on the defense once again. They'll have a first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. 4.47 to play in the third quarter. Both teams have had the football twice. Maybe this time, maybe this time. Full house backfield for the Broncos. Nielsen on a naked bootleg to the near side is dragged down. Again, that number 61, Mike Rowley, the man that dragged him down, grabbed a piece of the jersey and wouldn't let go. Loss of seven on the play all the way back to the 35-yard line. Loss of eight. That'll bring up second down and 18. And uh, that was either a miscue that time or a naked bootleg attempt by the San Juan Broncos. But Jens Nielsen was out there and somebody ate his lunch. <laughs> There's a screen pass to Fisher. Fisher's across the 45 and out to the 46 yard line before he's brought down by Candelaria. And it looked like Turner also went on the tackle. Dunn also in there. That'll be up uh, third down and right around seven. 11 yard gain on that screen pass to Fisher. That's the only pass that's been working tonight. Nielsen hasn't had time to throw the football. Every time he goes back, he's got a face full of white jerseys. So on third and seven, San Juan tries to trap to Fisher. He's got the first down and more. And there's a fumble. And the fumble is going to be recovered by the Cortez Panthers. No, now wait a minute. Cortez thought they had the football, but I, I believe the referee had blown the play dead. And the ball is out near the 44-yard line, first down. The Cortez fans are not happy. Well, I don't blame them. I think that might have been a little bit of an early whistle on the part of the referees, because as soon as Fisher hit the ground, the ball went, went loose. At any rate, a gain of about 11 for Fisher. It's going to be a first and 10 on the Panther 44-yard line. Nielsen, the quarterback. Bootlegs again, and there's Duran, Tim Duran, the man that comes through to make the tackle. Rowley almost got him again, but Duran, the man that came up and put the finishing touch on it, and there's a loss from the 44, a 16-yard loss all the way back to the 40-yard line, and that's going to bring up second down and about uh, 26 for the first down. <laughs> They're out in the parking lot right now, and that's going to be a... Somebody missed somebody on that one. There's Duran. We talked about him at the beginning of the broadcast, one of the leaders of the Panthers. Nielsen wants to throw the ball again. Intercepted. Dunn has the football, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Cortez. Dunn got the football on the 30-yard line and just ran it in. He had an escort all the way to the goal line. Well, the Cortez fans do all the talking. You can see that they're kind of fired up. The Panthers going for two. Story wants to throw in the end zone. He's got a man open. Looked like Ledbetter, the tight end, that got the football. In the back of the end zone for the two-point conversion, Fisher tried to break it up. 
And with 1.59 to play in the third quarter, the Cortez Panthers strike on an interception, a 30-yard interception return by Dave Dunn. And that makes the score 14 to 8. The Panthers lead the San Juan Broncos, and we'll be back after this. Well, the one thing that the San Juan Broncos were hoping to avoid, the turnovers, just helped the San Juan, uh, the Cortez Panthers score a quick touchdown. The uh, Panther rush on, on the passing game has been devastating. Jens Nielsen with no time to throw the football. He can't even see ground. anybody. The play before that, Duran dropped him for a 16-yard loss. The last time he came through, he had a number of white jerseys in there, just threw the ball up for grabs. And Dave Dunn, standing right in the middle of the field, got the ball, had an escort of about six guys. Nielsen tried to make a tackle, but uh, it was kind of futile. And so the Panthers lead 14 to, 14 to 8 with 159 to play in the third quarter. Back to receive for the Broncos, John Schmidt, Kahia Fisher, and Jason Tate. Schmidt takes it. Makes a great move. Gets back to the outside to the 30. Down to the 35 to 37 yard line. Boy, he's knocked out of bounds by a number of white jerseys. Rowley, the man that made the tackle. And Schmidt did a fun piece fake. of running Ooh. right there. The Broncos, I'm sure, would like to give Jens Nielsen a chance to get some time and find uh, John Schmidt downfield. He's been open a couple of times, but he just hasn't been able to... Well, Nielsen hasn't been able to throw the football. He hasn't had any time. So on first down, at the San Juan 37-yard line, the handoff goes to Yazzie, and he drives forward. He's taken down by Dunn. The middle linebacker makes the stop. They'll give him four. That'll bring up second down and six. 133 and counting in the third quarter. And Yazzie limps off the field. He'll be replaced by Gary Black. Second down and six. Jens Nielsen wants to throw. Screen pass intended for David Lee is incomplete. And Alan Olson again in there sharing company with Jens Nielsen. He's been in there all night long. That time, if they could have completed the pass, David Lee had an open field. He could have gained a lot of yardage. They might come back with that one. 109 to play in the third quarter. 14 to 8 if you just joined us. The Panthers just took the lead on an interception. There's a trap to uh, Fisher. Fisher gains about two. It's going to be fourth down. Fourth down and about four yards. And Yazzie comes back in. It looks like the Broncos might be punting the ball away. 47 seconds in the third quarter and a, quite a turnaround here in the last minute as the Panthers take a lead. They've trailed all the way through the ball game. They trail at halftime, eight to six. There's a snap. Yazi gets the ball away, good boot. That drives uh, Matt Riffey back to the five yard line. He breaks one tackle, gets a couple of moves. He's out to the 20, 25, 30 and out of bounds. And there's a marker back down about the 20 yard line. Matt Riffey did a great job that time. Or check that, it was Barry the man that ran the football. Again, it's kind of hard to distinguish between the 22 and the 32. We'll see what the penalty marker is going to be. It might have been a clipping penalty against Cortez. That will be the indication. And that will nullify a fine run back by Perry Berry. And put the uh, Panthers deep in their own territory. We're almost done with the third quarter. 22 seconds to play 
and uh, San Juan is going to have to get some offense going. They haven't been able to do anything but run the football a few yards and then stop. And they need to be able to get that passing game going. They're going to have to sit back up there and get tough on the pass right. blocking. Now Cortez is starting in the hole. The ball will be taken back all the way down to about the five-yard line. Where Story and Riffy and company will put it in play first and ten. They'll mark it at the ten-yard line to start out. Double wide receivers to the far side for Story. Hands off to the uh, second man through. That's Barry. And Barry gets about uh, back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. And so we got a timeout on the field. And while we got a timeout with a score 14 8, the Panthers leading the Broncos, we'll pause for these messages. Calvin Boggs, the Cortez center, the man that comes off the field, favoring his right ankle. And hopefully it's not going to be anything real serious. The Panthers have three seconds to play in the third quarter. They're back right around their 10-yard line. Story hands off to look like Riffy, the man that got the football. He'll get out about three yards, and that, there's the gun ending the third quarter of play. And Steve, uh, for the first half, the San Juan Broncos pretty much had their way, but boy, it's been all Cortez here in the second half. Cortez came back out and played ball. The one thing that you really have to notice is the uh, inability of the San Juan Broncos to, to put a pass block on somebody and uh, give Jens Nielsen the time to throw the football. That's the one thing they've had all year, their passing game. And without that, you know, they've been hurting. They can run the football, but if uh, Cortez knows they're not going to be able to throw the football because of the pass rush, they can tee off and watch the, watch the run. So we'll see what the San Juan Broncos can do. The Cortez Panthers have the football. Second down and about seven as we start the fourth quarter of play. Again, the score 14 to eight. The San Juan Broncos are trailing for the first time this year. Cortez leading. And on it's third down now, check that. Third down and about seven. Caldwell comes to the near side. Mike Ru Joey Rush to the far side. Handoff comes to Barry. Barry gets a couple of blocks and gets a good hole. He's going to be short of the first down. Across the 15, out to about the 17. They're going to be about a yard short, and they're going to be deep in their own territory. It looks like it might be a punting situation. And so Barry will punt the ball away. Story comes off. And if San Juan can get a good run back here, they might be able to get the ball in good field position and a chance to get back on the board. Jason Tate drops back in punt formation along with Kahia Fisher right at midfield. Barry gets a good ball away. That's going to drive down to the 40, and it's going to go inside the 45-yard line near the 30, and it's going to be touched down by... Uh, the Panthers, a good punt that time by Perry Berry all the way inside the 30-yard line to the San Juan 29, and that's where the Broncos will take over first and 10. 11.09 to play in the ball game, and the Broncos trailing for the first time this season, 14 to eight. And they're gonna have to suck it up right now and try to get some pass blocking going and see if they can get some offense generated. That Cortez defense has been really impressive tonight. They've done a good job. Gary Black and Kyle Meyer in the backfield for the Broncos. Jens Nielsen hands off to Black, and Black's got a big hole. Uh -oh. He's out across the 45-yard line, out near the 45-yard line. What a hole that time opened up by the middle of the San Juan line. Grover and Mance. 
Lauren Cook opening up the quick opener for Gary Black. And he goes from the 29-yard line out to the 44. Gain of uh, 15 yards. On first down, Jens Nielsen again hands off to Black. He picks his hole, cuts back, makes a couple of tackles. He's across midfield and down to the 46-yard line. <laughs> Black's running good. And Gary Black did most of that all on his own. He found he was cut off one way, cut back to the inside, broke a couple of tackles. He's going to gain nine. That'll bring up second and one. Makes you wonder why you need to pass, doesn't it? Black in there for Yazzie, doing a good job. He gets the call again across the 40-yard line, across the 45-yard line, I should say, and down to about the 39, across the 42. So he's inside the 40 at the 39-yard line. Now they're marking back at the 40, first and 10. And San Juan in three plays has gone from their 29-yard line down to the Panther 40. And that front line opening up some big holes Grover, Cook, Mance, all doing a good job. Monson. Fisher in motion to the near side. Hand off again, goes to Black, and Black drives through again, down across the 35 to the 32-yard line. That's a great drive. Lauren Cook, Richie Monson opening up a hole that time. And Gary Black is just doing it. What a performance by Gary Black filling in for Yazzie. 37 yards and four carries. That's marching the ball. On second down and two, the handoff goes to Meyer this time. He's got the first down. Olsen makes the tackle, a good driving tackle by Olsen. But he's inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. First and 10 for the San Juan Broncos. They're coming at Cortez. As Joe Davis said last week, this is what I call football. <laughs> Move it ahead. Blocking, running, tackling. Black again makes good yardage down inside the 25-yard line. They'll mark his forward progress right near the 25. Candelaria in on the tackle along with, uh, look like Chapel helping out. Four-yard gain. That'll be second and six for San Juan. San Juan's challenging that uh, defense. Jens Nielsen wants to throw, and Dunn is in there. Dunn was blitzing from his middle linebacker position, made a great play. Nobody touched him. And Nielsen is dropped all the way back at the 36-yard line for a loss of about 10 on the play. He feels like he's all alone back there. Actually, a loss of about 13. That's going to bring up third down and about 18. Nielsen out of the shotgun formation. Wants to throw. He's got a man downfield, and it's intended, it looks like, for Billy Slavens. Gary Black, the intended receiver. A little underthrown. He had to come back. Rowley, the man that was covering. San Juan wanted an interference penalty on that one, but no call was made. That's going to be fourth down and long. And San Juan again, no time to throw the football. He was lucky to find Black out there, but Black really wasn't open. He might have been the first blue jersey he saw. If something's working, don't fix it. They might have should have marched on in there. There's a reverse to Schmidt, and Schmidt's going to be clobbered if he doesn't get out of it. And he is. He's going to be dropped out around the 40-yard line. I don't understand. San Juan had the ground game going perfectly. They set up and tried to pass, which was not a bad move. But then they tried the end around on fourth down, and the ball is going to be first and 10 for the Panthers out near the 39-yard line. And Broncos that time looked good until they uh, just had that one bad uh, break when uh, Dunn sacked Jens Nielsen. They got a game plan going, but they don't keep with it. And that's really kind of a puzzle. They had a good ground game going. Ten yards a carry, and generally when you got something going like that, and you run it until they stop yeah, you. Punch it in. You know, it's, it wasn't a bad call to try the pass because they've been running, 
but it just so happened that Dunn read it perfectly. They had the blitz going that time, and Dunn was in there quickly. Nobody touched him. And now the Panthers have a first and 10 at their own 39-yard line. We'll see what the Broncos can do on defense. Story wants to throw the football. Downfield, he's got a man open. It's Rust, and he just overthrows him. Woo. Rust got behind everybody. Schmidt was down there covering. Mara was there. Fisher was there. Check that David Lee back on the coverage instead of uh, Schmidt. But a little bit uh, That's a deadly shorter, threat. and it would have been a nice pass. So that'll bring down second and 10 for the uh, Panthers. Turner goes in at a wide receiver position. He'll go to the far side. Caldwell comes to the near side. We might look for another pass here on second down. Now the draw play to Barry, and Barry is hit after a gain of one. The Aussie in on the tackle, Mance along with uh, Monson all in on the tackle for the Broncos. No gain on the play. That'll bring up third down and 10. 6.20 and counting, and the Broncos have got to get the ball back and try to put some points on the board. They trail 8 to 14. All they need is a touchdown. They can tie the game. Russ goes to the far side. Caldwell to the near side on third and long. We might look for another pass to Rust. Story straight back. It's a big rush. Tries to throw it out to Barry. And Barry Gary Black pressure. that time doing a good job. That'll bring up fourth and 10, and the uh, Panthers will punt the ball away again. Well, defense holds again. See if we can get something going on the offense. Well, both defenses have done well. It's just that uh, the Panther defense got that one big break when they got the interception, ran it back for a touchdown, and that's something they've done all year. Barry gets a good kick away. Fisher's going to let it go, and it's going to roll down near the goal line. And I don't know if it went into the end zone or not. It'll be a touchback. Lee Everett thought he got it on about the one, but the referee right on the spot to make the call. And the Broncos will take the ball over first and 10 on their own 20. And this is where they were a few minutes ago, and they came right down the field in about six plays down inside the 30-yard line. Let's we'll see what they can do this time. Again, the, the pass blocking has just not been there. Jens Nielsen not having any time to throw the football. They can't run those gadget plays because the ends for Cortez stay at home and play so well. The straight up the middle looks like the best kind of running that San Juan's been able to do tonight. 5.33 to play in the ball game, 14 to eight. The Panthers lead by six. And San Juan deep in their own territory. Nielsen, the quarterback, hands off to the second man through Meyer and he gets nowhere. Durant in on the tackle, Olsen in on the tackle. Maybe a loss of one on the play that time for Meyer, so that's gonna bring up second down and 11. And all the Panthers really have to do right now is hold on defense and just get the ball back on offense and try to run the clock down. I think they're expecting the run. On second and 11, Nielsen hands off again this time to Tate, and Tate gets back maybe to the 20-yard line, the original line of scrimmage, but no more. And the uh, San Juan line maybe losing a little bit of their punch. They'll give him back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third and 10, an obvious passing situation. And watch right now, I'm, I'm betting that the uh, Panther defense, the linebackers in the line are gonna be teeing off and they're gonna be coming. Might be a good time for a draw play. Handoff goes to Fisher, and Fisher's gonna be out across the 25-yard line, close to a first down. We'll see where they mark the ball. It will be a first down across the 30, out to about the 32. A good play selection that time. I'm sure that uh, the Panthers were looking for the pass. They ran that little trap play to Fisher. Got a good blocking hole up front by Robert Mance and uh, Grover and Jeremy Liberton on their left side and picked up the 12 yards for the touchdown. So now the Broncos have a little breathing room on the 32-yard line, first and 10. 
Nielsen hands off to Meyer. And Meyer gets about four yards. Now they'll give him about seven. It'll bring up second and three. It's kind of hard from this angle to see exactly where the football is going to be marked. So the Broncos again moving the football, but the clock is running. 3.44 to play. They've got to get some points on the board quickly. Billy Slavin's in motion to the near side. Handoff goes to Black, the first man through. He might get a yard. That'll bring up third down and two. And now the Broncos have another third down situation. They've got to convert right here. They can't afford to give the football up. We're running out of time here. Duran comes out. And Keelan Bogg comes out. Third down and short. We'll see what the Broncos can do. Linebackers are up tight. Gary Black or Myers gets the call and he's going to have the... I think he's got the first down. It's going to be dependent upon where they mark his forward motion. He needs to get out about to the 45-yard line, and I think they're going to give him the first and 10. That'll be a first down for San Juan at the 46. And the Broncos continue to move the football. The time question is now, can they put points on the board before the clock runs down? And can they keep the drive going long enough to put the points on the board? Nielsen again on first down, hands off to Fisher, and Fisher will get about three yards before he's dragged down. Duran in on the play. They'll give him two, that'll bring up second and eight. The clock is running, 2.30 and counting. You missed that pass game, you know, to get the clock stopped. Well, the pass game has been more or less just a loss of yardage of about 10 yards. On second and eight. Meyer got the football that time and he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. So it'll be third down and a long eight for the Broncos. Aaron Jones comes into the ball game, maybe a little speed to the outside. The Broncos passing game has been effectively shut down tonight. The one thing that they thought they could really do against Cortez, but they haven't had the time to throw the football. On the other hand, the Panthers got that 75 yard touchdown pass. And that's, that's something the, the Broncos haven't done this year is give up the long bomb. Like 2.07 to play in the ball game. And the Broncos have the football, third and a long eight. At about the 46, 47 yard line. Schmidt is to the near side. Schmidt comes to the outside. He's got the football and he's dragged down. Good play by Weitzel. But Schmidt will get the first down. That will stop the clock with 107. And Weitzel looks like he might be hurt. The ball will be down at the 36-yard line, Weissel gets up holding his ankle. That's all we've been looking for, that pass play. That was a good timing play that time by Nielsen. He just threw the football before Schmidt made his cut. Schmidt was looking for it all the way, and he did a good job to grab the football, and he was hit immediately by Weissel. Good coverage down the, the part of uh, the Cortez backfield. But that's the kind of thing the, Pan the Broncos are going to have to do. They're going to have to get the ball downfield quickly. We're under two minutes to play. Again, Nielsen wants to throw the football downfield. He's got Jens Nielsen. And Nielsen was triple covered. Or check that. David Lee. My mistake. David Lee was triple covered downfield. All three of them hit him. <laughs> and if, Nielsen, if Lee is triple covered, somebody's got to be open. The pass coverage, uh, the pass blocking was good that time. Nielsen had time to throw it, but David Lee was triple covered. San Juan on second and 10. Nielsen again wants to throw. He gets the screen pass off. Intended probably for Aaron Jones. But Alan Olsen again in quickly. Nobody touched him that time. Got to hold him out of there. 
This is the play right here. Third and long for the Broncos. They've got two more plays. 145 to play. They've got to get the first down and keep the drive going. Olsen working against Jimmy Swenson, the tight end. Pitch out to Aaron Jones. Jones wants to get to the outside. And he breaks one tackle. He's hammered. He broke a couple of tackles. Tim Duran came up and made the tackle. It crunched him after Jones thought he might have gotten away. A loss of three on the play. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 13. The Broncos need a big play right here. 119 to play in the ball game. And if they can't convert, they have to turn the ball over. It's going to be tough to get the ball back. Watch for the uh, Panther defense to be coming. The linebackers looks like they're going to be blitzing. Might be the option play. Yazi breaks a tackle. Schmidt's got the first down. Down to the 22-yard line. John Schmidt on that little option play we've seen so many times this year. Yazi was almost tackled. He broke the tackle. Looked like Ledbetter was the man, or Candelaria, the man that almost got him. Yazi did a good, good job to break the tackle. Let's play. Found Schmidt downfield, and it's going to be first and 10. We're under a minute to play. The Broncos are going to have to get it going. We wanted action. We've we got, got it. action. The Panther fans yelling defense. The Bronco fans want some offense. The pitch out goes to Meyer. He fumbles the football, but he gets it back. But there's going to be a loss in the play of about seven yards. Stacy Yazzie is down on the field. Yazzie is still down. There's officials timeout. And that time, I don't know, you got to, I'm not sure what the play was supposed to be that time. But anyhow, we've got 46 seconds left to play in the ball game. Stacy Yazzie is down on the field for the Broncos. He's up now. He had that leg injury a little bit uh, earlier. Could be that he was just a little bit disgusted with the way the play went. Well, we're into it right now. 46 seconds to play in the ball game. The Broncos have second and 15. The ball is sitting on uh, the Panther 28 yard line. And if you watch the Panther defensive backs, they're back deep. They're not going to want the uh, little short pass. They're going to let the short pass go. They don't want the long pass. And the defensive line and the linebackers, they've got seven men right at the line of scrimmage. Handoff goes to Black, and he gets nowhere. Here we are again. Tim Duran again in on the tackle. Kellen Boggs also in on the tackle. And we've got it. Third down and... Uh, 15, and here we need a couple of big plays. The Broncos take time out and talk it over. And with our score, 14-8, the Panthers leading the Broncos. We'll take time out for these messages. Okay, let's go. The Broncos have talked it over. They've got a third and 15 on the 28-yard line of the Panthers. We'll see what Jens Nielsen and company can do right here. Nielsen pitches out to Tate. Tate breaks one tackle, loses the football. There's a scramble for it. I don't know who got it. And the Cortez Panthers have recovered the football. What a jubilant bunch of defensive players down there for the Panthers. The Broncos are just ejected. And I don't know, I, you hate to question, you know, question Morris Winston in the call. But that's not exactly the play I expected them to run that time. What a heartbreak for the Broncos. 27 seconds left to play.
27 seconds left to play in the game. And the Broncos are on the verge of losing their first game of the season against a very tough Cortez Panthers, but they played them very tough. It's been a good ball game. You couldn't ask for a more exciting game. And now Larry Archibald wants to take a timeout for the Panthers. You know, they've done some scouting on this team because that's... Uh, and I talked to Larry Archibald on Monday over in Cortez, and the one thing he noticed about the Broncos is that the, they like to throw the football. And that's the one thing they've shut down tonight. None of the wide receivers have caught a football, except for Schmidt on a couple of good plays in this last drive. But before that, he was shut out. David Lee's been shut out. The only other person to catch a football was uh, Fisher. He's got a couple of them, one for the first touchdown. But the long passing game that the Broncos are used to showing has just not been there, and that's mainly because of the pass rush that the Panthers have put on. They've been devastating all night. Durant, Olsen, you know, the whole defensive line and the linebackers, Dunn's done a good job. And so it could be all over, but the shouting right here, the Broncos are gonna be trying to strip the football, and now Story will just fall down. And so Scott Story falls on the football, and that will probably be the last play of the game. The clock is running down 11 seconds. And the San Juan Broncos, in a heartbreaker, will lose their homecoming game, their first game of the season to the Cortez Panthers. The final score, 14 to eight. The Panthers beat the San Juan Broncos, and we'll be back with a final wrap up of this ball game right after these messages. Joslin and Steve Burtonshaw back here at San Juan High School where the Broncos have just lost their first game of the season in a heartbreaker. 14 to 8, the final score they lose to the Cortez Panthers. And Steve, uh, the first half was an excellent ball game. Both teams moved the football, both defenses looked good. In the second half, it was uh, just a fluke play on defense. Jens Nielsen got a big rush, threw the ball up for grabs. Dave Dunn grabbed it on the 30 and ran it back for a touchdown. They got the two-point conversion, and that was the difference in the ball game That's right, right there. Both teams walking off the field right now, a heartbreak for the San Juan Broncos. They lose their homecoming game, but they played an excellent ball game. The only thing that, uh, that really you could see that was missing in the San Juan offense was their passing game. Cortez shut that down effectively. They did a good job. The running game was very good for San Juan, but uh, just wasn't without, enough. without the passing game, they just couldn't click and they couldn't put the points on the board. They got the sustained drives. They had a good drive going down with 46 seconds to play in the ball game. They tried an option pass. They lost the football. Cortez came up with it, and uh, that was the end of the ball game effectively. We do have a couple of awards to give out. The offensive player of the game tonight for the San Juan Broncos will go to uh, Cahia Fisher. Fisher scored the only touchdown for the Broncos. He also did a good job on some other plays on offense, moved the football very well. The defensive player of the game will go to uh, Stacy Yazzie. Yazzie in on a lot of tackles tonight, did a good job on, on defense. So uh, those two players, uh, Cahia Fisher and Stacy Yazzie, are offensive and defensive players of the game. They will receive a T-shirt from Navajo T-shirt and Design here in Blanding. And uh, I'm sure it's not much of a consolation. It's a heartbreak loss. But, uh, you know, some they, the old cliche is maybe a loss is good for you. You know, you never know. Next week, they got to go down to Moab and play Grand County. And they're four and one on the season. They're having a good year. It's nothing to get down about. Cortez is five and oh. They lost and to they a play, fine team. They play in a tough league over in the, in Colorado. And they've got a big schedule ahead of them, but they played some good clubs and they played good ball tonight, good defense. The defensive line did a fine job. They harassed Jens Nielsen in the uh, defense in the backfield all night long. Nielsen had very little time to throw the football and uh, a lot of sacks, a lot of good defensive play by the uh, Panthers. But uh, the Broncos again will go four and four and one on the season. They will go next week to uh, Grand County and Moab and they will play the Grand County Red Devils. 
And this is a loss uh, in the loss column for the league games, which I don't know if it'll hurt them or not. It just depends on how they can come back next week. And if they can come back and, and end up winning the rest of their ball games, they've got a good chance to go undefeated from here on out. And if you can go uh, with an eight and one or seven and one record, that's gonna put them in good standings when the playoffs right. come up at the end of the year. Next week, uh, Sideline Productions and Blue Mountain Cable Channel 13 will be in, Mo in Monticello as we follow the Monticello Buckaroos taking on the uh, Monument Valley Cougars. And that game uh, will be seen right here on the cable channel, Channel 13, uh, the following week. And uh, we again hope you enjoy tonight's ball game. The loss uh, to San Juan, their first of the year. It's kind of a, a downer after a good week of homecoming. But I think they're going to bounce back. These kids have a lot of character, right. and I think they're going to do a good, good job. Team. They'll be all right. Final score again, 14 to, to 8. The Cortez Panthers go undefeated as they hand the San Juan Broncos their first loss of the year. 14 to 6, the final score. I'm Neil Joslin for uh, Steve Burtonshaw. We'd like to thank the uh, coaching staff of San Juan High School, Morris Swenson and all those who helped us in that department. We'd also like to thank... Larry Archibek and uh, Jim Gatley, the uh, Galatley, the athletic director at Cortez High School for their cooperation in helping us bring in this ball game. Final score again, 14 to 6, 14 to 8 that is. The Panthers beat the San Juan.